Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to do just that. We're going to be revisiting one of my earlier decks from this year, uh, which has gotten a few buffs. And we're also looking into it a bit deeper and we've made some adjustments as well. So uh, today we're going to be taking another look at the revised Tastes Like Poison deck, the deck that I now like to call the Salamandra Alliance. So, the Salamandra Alliance is, of course, a Syndicate deck with the Off the Books Leader ability, which allows you to give you yourself two coins three times. So, as you can see over here, so three charges of that ability, but also every Tribute ability costs one coin less. So, this entire deck is based around Tribute abilities and, of course, Salamandra, which ties in very well with all the Poison abilities that we will be triggering, because this is a very, very aggressive Poison deck. There's a lot of those in this deck. Uh, I've adjusted it a little bit from the original implementation and also made it a bit more consistent when drawing your cards. So we'll go through the cards one by one. If you're familiar with all the cards, don't, um, well, don't worry. You can skip to the example matches in this video using the timeline down below. So if you're not interested in a deck overview, you can do just that. To anybody still here, let's go through every single card. First up, the Street Urchins are four provision cards, uh, two power, and gives you three coins when you play them. And for one coin, they can actually boost themselves as long as you have coins. You can just keep spending your coins on this card to just give themselves another point every single time. So one for one, pretty easy spending ability. Next up is the Fist Deck Trafficker, which is our first poisoner. We have two of these in the deck, three power, and allows you to poison any unit, including your own. And if you use that on your own units, then you also get three coins. There's a few cards in this deck that actually benefit from being poisoned, um, which we'll show off in a minute. So that is also a very good target for this. Then up next, of course, since we're focusing so heavily on Salamandria, we haven't seen any just yet, but believe me, there are some in this deck. Uh, we also have Assault, so a crime card that allows you to damage an enemy unit by four. And if you control two Salamandria units, so at least two, doesn't need to be precisely two, you can deal six damage instead. So six, four, four with removal, which is very, very good. And most of the time, you will definitely have two Salamandra units on the field. Up next is another crime card, Fistek, of course, again with the poisoning. Gives you four coins, it's a crime card, and you poison another unit. Again, you can choose to poison either your opponent's unit or your own. So it doesn't really matter. Well, of course it matters if you're already poisoning something that is poisoned, because it's gonna die afterwards. But uh, you can also use it on your own units if you don't have a target for it. The Mutated Hounds, our first real Salamandra units. Four power, one armor, and has a bit of a split uh, ability. So if you play this card, the Hounds on the melee row, you give an enemy unit pleading for two turns. You can choose, of course, your target. If you put them on the ranged row, you actually poison a unit of your choice. Again, it is a unit, so the poison can go on your own units if you want to. The bleeding can't. The bleeding needs to be on an enemy unit, so keep that in mind. Up next is the Salamandra Mage. This is probably one of the better 5 provision cards in all of Syndicate. So 5 power for 5 provisions. If you have 4 coins available to spend or 3 with this ability that we have, you can damage 3 adjacent enemy units by 2. If you have all the books like we have here, you only need to spend 3 coins. If you manage to hit 3 targets for 2 damage, that gives you 6 damage for only 3 coins. So 2 for 1 coin every single time. As long as this card is on the board, you also get one coin for every tribute ability you pay for, including this one. So you get one of those coins back. So technically you're only spending two coins on six damage. Really, really powerful on its own. But starting from Adrenaline 5, you actually get two coins back. So if you play this when you have five cards or less in your hand after you played the mage, you actually only have to spend one coin because you get two back for six damage which is really, really good. And as long as this card is on the field, that's gonna trigger every single time. So every tribute ability we pay for, we get one or two coins back. The Salamandra Abomination, another horrifying card that fits into the Salamandra archetype. And this is one of those cards that actually benefits from getting poisoned themselves. So for tribute one, so if you pay one coin or in our case, zero whatsoever, you can poison yourself. And whenever this unit is poisoned, you boost yourself by two. 
which also can happen if this unit is veiled. So if you veil this unit and then poison it, which technically doesn't have an effect, you do get the two point boost. At Adrenaline 6, so if you have six cards or less in your hand by the end of your turn, you also purify yourself. This unit gets rid of any status effects um, that it might have. So that includes everything from, uh, would it have immunity? That would also be applied to that. But Veil, um, Bleeding, Poison, all that gets removed, which is really good when you get hit by a Blood Moon, which is uh, prevalent in monsters these days. Because if this card is the only card on the Blood Moon row, it just purifies the bleeding away every single time, which is really, really cool. Kurt is also in this deck. Uh, so six provisions, six power. This wasn't originally in the original version of this deck, but on the, if you play them on the melee row, you can actually add a bounty to an enemy unit which of course with the plenty of poisoning you have can get net you a lot of coins uh, or if you want to use them on the range row you can actually purify any unit with that as well so either yours or your opponent again then just to add a few spenders to this deck because we're generating a lot of coins we need to want to spend those as well horsen's freak show once more so four power one armor and gives you two coins when you play them and every two coins you spend on this card will allow you to damage an enemy unit of your choice by two as long as they are on the melee row. They want to be up front and center to be able to dish out that damage. Then we have the Blindheim Brothers. These are very interesting cards and both of them got a significant buff from the last uh, patch. So Gellert, five power, gives you two coins when you play him and every one coin that you spend on him allows you to poison an allied unit and boost that same unit by two giving you two points per coin again and the cool thing about this usually this card had a cooldown so a cooldown of one so you could only use that once per turn but now that cooldown is only in effect if you have five cards or less in your hand so as long as you have six or more you can Keep spending coins to uh, poison your units. If you put that on a Veiled Abomination, then you can just keep poisoning it and boosting it by four. Because the Abomination will also trigger its own ability, giving you four points per coin, which is basically the most efficient way of spending coins, I think, ever in this game. Um, Gallard Blindheim is really, really powerful. And his brother, Roland Blindheim, is also very, very powerful. He actually lost his adrenaline ability. So usually this um, card, before this card had an adrenaline ability that I think it was adrenaline five or six uh, caused them to only trigger on your own units being poisoned. Now that has been removed completely. So this guy has seven power and every time a unit is poisoned, whether it's your own or your opponent's, you gain two coins. So every single one of those poisons in this deck will also give you another two coins with this card on the board, which is extremely powerful. Then the Salamander location card is also very, very cool. So it gives you resilience on the card itself, so it stays on the board until the next turn as well. Um, and when you deploy it, you spawn and play a uh, one of these cards. Usually you want to go for either a Salamander Abomination, the one we talked about already, or the Mage. The two other ones are less interesting, unless this is the very final card you play, then maybe the 10 points, uh, well basically 9 points of the field experiment might be uh, more interesting. But even with that, Salamander Mage gives you more bang for your buck. So usually either one of these two, depending on your... Uh, yeah, your needs. Uh, this card also has an other ability that allows you to, um, on order, move a poison from one of your own units to another unit. Also triggering the uh, kill effect, of course, if you do that on a unit that is already poisoned. Which is basically allows you to double poison a unit in the same turn. Because you can poison a unit with something you play with a deployability and then move a poison from your own units to that same unit killing it in the same turn. So there's a few ways for us to actually double poison in the same turn and I'll show you the rest in a minute. Because this, this little tiny little creature is also very very extremely powerful. It is 9 provisions for only 1 power but it also gives you 1 coin which is not much and on deploy it poisons a unit again not a very powerful ability but if you're able to spend the nine coins or in our case eight coins for the tribute ability you poison every single unit on the battlefield which basically allows you to either um, poison everything at once or prepare this ability by poisoning separate units on your opponent's board, all separately, and then triggering this card, killing all the already poisoned units in one go. 
Um, the other passive effect of this card is that it also increases the profit by one for every allied Salamandra unit. So for example, if you have four Salamandra units, the profit of this card gives you five coins instead of just one. So it just adds that on top. And this happens before you need to pay the tribute. So if you, uh, for example, have only two coins, but you have five um, Salamandra units on the field, you can still trigger this card's tribute because you'll be getting six coins from the profitability and that happens before the tribute then we have azai javad azai javad actually has a triple um ability here that is very very interesting first off this card is a salamander card so it gels very well with everything else we just talked about he um has a tribute ability so that also triggers back to the mage and to rayla in a minute as well um, so for three coins, and in our case two coins, you actually get two scarabs. Those scarabs have one power and one armor, but also have the defender status. So this card basically gives you three Salamandra units in one go. Two of them are defenders and is a tribute ability. And because of our leader ability, you also get a single coin extra, even if you use a tribute, because the tribute will only be two in our case, while you get three coins. Then we have Savola, another Salamandra card, gives you two coins, starts at six power. And if you're able to spend the eight coin tribute in our case, then you spawn Savola's Frightener, which is another Salamandra unit with 11 power and six armor. So very, very powerful indeed. Technically giving you um, 19 points for the single card if you manage to pay the tribute. Of course, you're spending those coins, but we have cards that trigger off the tribute as well. And also giving you, again, two Salamandra units, which shells very well with Salamander and stuff like that. Then one of the new cards I've uh, included, well, not new, this is a pretty old card, but it's a new card in this deck, Morale. Basically giving you uh, another Poisoner. So five power, and when you play him, you poison an enemy unit. But if you can keep him alive on the melee row for one turn, on your next turn, you have an order ability to poison another enemy unit, basically giving you another opportunity to poison a single enemy unit twice in the same turn, which is very, very powerful indeed. Um, this brings the total uh, options to poison enemy units to 10 in this deck, which should be more than enough, especially in combination with the Salamander, uh, which will poison the entire field. To finish that off, we have two more very, very powerful cards. We have Fallen Rayla starts at five power, gives you three coins. And when you pay her tribute ability for three coins, in our case, two coins, you gain Veil, so she can't be targeted with uh, status abilities. At Adrenaline 5, however, so if you have only five cards or less left in your hand, uh, this has an extra ability. This card has a very powerful extra ability that whenever you pay a tribute ability, you boost yourself, so Rayla in this case, by that tribute's cost. It is the adjusted cost. So in case of Rayla, she also triggers on her own tribute ability. So when you pay the two coins to gain Veil, you also boost yourself by two um, because of the fact that you spend two coins. If you uh, spend the tribute on Savola, while Rayla is on the board and the Adrenaline has been matched, you actually gain eight points on Rayla just because of the fact that you trigger Savola's tribute ability and pay for it. So you gain every single coin, you basically get uh, extra points for those coins that you spend on tribute abilities. And then the next one is the uh, evolution card of Syndicate Jacques, um, Jacques the Eldersburg. We don't have Devotion in this deck because of Morale and of course we also have um, Oneiromancy to give you a better uh, well, uh, another option to pull cards from your deck, a bit more consistency in this deck. Um, but Jacques is the evolution card. We don't go to his final stage, but we do go to the second stage every single time. He starts at six power, gives you four coins, gives you a tribute ability of three in our case. So again, triggering on the Rayla, triggering on the mages, uh, which allows you to spawn two Flaming Rose Footmen. Again, the tribute goes to three and you get two three power units from that. So that is, um, again, two points per coin that you're getting. He also has his fee ability in the second form, which gives you another spender to uh, spend your remaining coins. And this will most likely be the card that you'll spend your final coins on. So just one for one, boost yourself by one for every coin that you spend. And together with Oneiromancy, again, the echo card that allows you to play any card from your deck that fits all, that uh, concludes all the cards in this deck. You also have Crystal Skull, Usually to put that on an abomination, because if you veil an abomination, the poisons will not take effect, so the poisons won't stick, but the abomination's ability to boost himself by two will still trigger. 
And that's it for this deck overview. Let's head into an example match to see how this all gels together very, very well. So, first match of the day against Nilfgaard. This seems to be a, becoming a team in um, these later days. We're just always facing Nilfgaard, which is a very bad matchup, by the way, because Nilfgaard, of course, has a lot of poisons of their own, so we definitely don't want to poison our own units too much here. Um, our starting hand is not that bad, actually. I'm going to get rid of the second mage, and we get Rayla. I was hesitating because I have a lot of gold cards in my hand from the very first go. Which is usually something I don't want to have because I want to spend those bronzes in the first round. And we get the Slave Hunter as a start. So the Slave Hunter does 2 damage on an order ability. Um, which could very well go into the Street Urchins here. Um, also has Assimilate so it will be boosted every time they play a card that is not from their own deck. But for now, let's just put the Street Urchins on. I don't want to waste all my spenders. I only have a few in this deck, so I need to be careful. But if I now start poisoning myself already, that's not going to be good. Um, so let's just put the Street Urchins over here. We get three coins, and then I'll boost it once. So it doesn't immediately die from the Slave Hunter hitting it once. So we get Artorias. That usually goes into either the Hunting Pack or... Oh, another Slave Hunter. Huh. He is getting boosted, so... Okay, fair enough. I could technically now play the Salamandra Abomination, although it is too soon. So I now have nine cards in my hand, so I still need to wait two turns to actually do this properly. Yeah, I'm gonna put the Salamandra Abomination down. I'll do the free tribute now. I'm gonna use Horson's Freak Show. Um, he's probably gonna die really soon, but I can at least get rid of um, Artorias that way. And maybe on the... Slave Hunter there as well. I'm hoping I get enough coins in a minute. Well, hoping, because I want to actually use the Salamandra Mage to get rid of Artorias. It will depend on the next card. Usually we also get Bratons against um, Chinese Ball. And then we get the Emissary, so that's going to boost Artorias again. Probably. Okay. And we get hit on the Street Urchins and on the Street Urchins again or not? Okay, yeah, the Street Urchins again. I could poison myself, but doing that before I actually get get the Abomination on the field would be a bit of a waste. Although, yeah, I, I guess I can do that. That's another three coins for us. I could spend them on Horse and Streak Show, but I'm not going to. So I want to use those three coins in a minute to actually uh, put the Mage on the field. So we get a poison on Horse and Streak Show. Which is fine. Um, I do have the um, Adrenaline ability for the Salamandra Abomination now. So I might as well put that on the field. Poison him with the Tribute ability. Because uh, that will get purified after this. There we go. Poison is gone. So I can definitely use my Abominations properly now. We still have the 3 coins for the mage, and that's going to be 11 points. So we're going to get poisoned again, but now we have 3 targets to actually hit with the mage. So that is absolutely fine. So there we go. Let's use the tribute ability, also giving us the benefit that we now get 2 coins from the tribute ability, I think. No, why didn't we get 2? Because we were at a run in 5 when we played it. That's not entirely correct, I think, but still not a problem. Then we get the Duchess Informant. The Duchess Informant is probably going to steal... Ooh, the Fistech Trafficker. Okay. And that's going to go on the Mage. Uh, fair enough, I suppose. I wasn't even going to use the Mage too much now. Uh, I am going to use Gallard Blindheim now. He doesn't have the... Um, well, he does have the cooldown now, so I can only use him once every single time. But that gives us four points for every... Uh, coin that we spent and the poison is going to get removed every single time so I don't think our opponents will have a good way of removing that unless maybe with Yennefer's invocation. So we get the Emissary, the Emissary is going to be another 7 point boost. I could use Savola but for Savola I'm going to need to use 2 charges of my leader ability. I'm going to be overplaying if I use Rayla here but I think it's probably the better option so let's use Rayla now. Uh, pay for the Tribute ability, which is going to be basically free, and then poison the Abomination again. So that's another four points, and we're definitely ahead right now. And we even got more coins than we started with, so that is also really, really good. 
think our opponent might actually pass now, unless they have Yennefer's Invocation, which in case it's also good, because that's going to get rid of that card. And there we go, there's Yennefer's Invocation. That was to be expected. But I am not done yet, so um, I'm going to use one charge of my leader ability. Oh, there we go. Let's just cancel that now. And then Savola is going to go on the field. He's going to be able to pay the tribute. We get eight extra points and I think we can just keep our two coins because that's going to be really, really good. Yeah, and there we go. There we have the pass, which is really good because that gives us card advantage in the final round. Now, there is an argument to say that we push, but Nilfgaard has too much momentum in these cases. I could push until uh, Masquerade Ball is out, but with um, Azai Javad, I'm probably better off to try and get the better cards in my hand, but with an Aeromancy that might actually be the case. This is good for now. The only card that I'm really missing right now is the Salamander. Um, there's a few other cards that I can definitely use, like the location card, but right now this is looking very, very good. So, let's pause and go into that final round with uh, card advantage. And that actually doesn't trigger, because we don't have a status on our side of the field, so that was a... Well, not, not exactly a wasted card, but they didn't get the thinning that they most likely wanted out of that. But, they can get at least... Okay, Gallic, that's something. Oh, that's Roland, probably. Yeah, <laughs> that's Roland. Do we get rid of Assault? Assault is actually pretty good. Our opponent is going to start, so we do have the four points to take out. Um, but I want to get the poisoning going. Let's get rid of Assault. We get the Fistech Trafficker. Let's get rid of that as well. We get the Salamander. Okay, so that's basically all our good cards in our hands. We have multiple poisoners. So this is going to be A-OK. -okay. And it's we start with the Nozga Sergeant, so that is definitely really, really good. Okay. I should probably start with Azar Javed. Even though he has a tribute ability that, of course, would be nice to have otherwise. But it gives us three Salamandra units. Um, let's put him on the front row so we can actually protect morale if we need to. So that there we go. And we get an extra coin out of that because he gives you more coins than we need to spend on the tribute ability. And Nilfgaard doesn't really have a good option to start attacking lower level units. So those defenders might actually survive more than a single round now. And there we get another Nausicaa Sergeant. That is perfect. I'm gonna put down Roland now, since he's pretty well protected behind those two Scarabs. And of course he's also Salamandra, so that gives us four Salamandra units. Because of course, remember, for Salamander, we get coins, extra coins for every Salamandra unit we have. And there we get Masquerade Ball. Um, I could now use the Salamandra Mage, um, but the next tribute's abilities are going to be pretty far off. Yeah, let's just use Morale first and put that on the Thirsty Dame. There we go. So just to get that out of our hand, because otherwise we have too many poisoners in our hand that our opponent might be able to use. They won't be able to use Salamander the way I do, because for Salamander you need to have coins for every single um, hit that you take. So even with Double Cross, the only card that they will realistically be able to take is Shark uh, or Oneromancy. But Jacques is definitely going to be our final play here. We get Menno Kuhorn. Which is going to be Coup de Grasse on the Scarab. Interesting. So that's going to give them an extra protector. And it's going to be over there. Which is really, really smart. Because of course now we need to either use our Salamandra uh, Mage. To get it like that. But for once I'm actually going to use the Salamandra Mage as in. Ten, well, not as intended, but from the location card. So we can do this. Use Salamandra Mage. Uh, play him over here. We have three coins. So there we go. We get two back. And then I'm just going to hit the Scarab with those three coins. We get two back anyway, so we still got the better hand there. And then we poison the Nausicaa Sergeant. Which also gives us two coins, of course, because every poisoner is going to get hit that way. Remember with the location, if that scarab gets poisoned by anything, we can actually move that poison away from the card. So we get Bratens. Bratens is going to copy the Salamandra Mage probably then. 
Or is it no, just an emissary. Fine. I will be able to poison whatever is targeted there. And then we get, yeah. Double cross and double cross is gonna get Jacques, I think. Unless we get poison. No, Jack. The obvious choice. And of course you're gonna pay the tribute for that because that gives you uh, six points extra when you actually pay that tribute. All right, all right, all right. That's actually really good. Let's play our second Salamandra Mage over here. We spend the coins and we hit them over there. We get two coins back. And that is a-okay. Oh, there we go. So by setting up poisons like this, you can see what's gonna happen next. We're gonna start uh, playing the Salamander in a minute. Of course, if our opponent wants to counteract that, although it looks like they don't have enough aristocrats, are they not gonna play... Oh, that is really bad. <laughs> That's really bad on the Viper Mentor. Uh, yeah, because he only goes to 6 because we cleared out our deck really, really efficiently. Um, I need to play Shark first, actually. So I'm gonna do that first, because Jacques gives me four coins, giving me just the limit of the nine coins that we get. We actually get all those coins back, because we get four back from the Salamandra Mages. And then we're gonna start... Do I actually... No, I don't want to actually hit that now. Yeah, I think I might be able to survive that. So I don't want to spend the coins on Jack just yet, because of course if they have something that's really hard hitting, we're going to be losing those uh, those points, but I don't think they'll be able to do anything. Yeah, it's just Usurper giving them another poison, but it's only a single poison. So that's going to go on whatever, I suppose. Oh, that was really bad. That was a really bad choice. So now, um, let's hit Jacques up as much as possible. We're gonna get... Yeah, I'm just gonna boost him up top. And then poison whatever I want. Probably the Nosca Sergeant over here. Um, and then boost that up very, very high. There we go. And then we're gonna use... Uh, I think we have one, two, three, four, five um, Salamandra units. So we get six out of this. So if we, oh, there we go. Yeah. I couldn't even show it off. So if we use the Salamander, then all the units that we poisoned so far would have died. And then we could move even another poison back. So there were going to be four units that died, giving us 40 points in one go. Our coin purse would have been full again because of um, Roland. And we would have been able to boost Jacques even higher. So that would have probably been a 30 plus point Jacques at the very end, giving us... The win against Nilfgaard again. So I wanted to pause here for a minute. So Nilfgaard against Nilfgaard, it's really important that you don't over poison yourself. Because of course Nilfgaard has access to a lot of poisons themselves and could cause your own poisoned units to be destroyed and when then you're not really benefiting from the poisons that you're actually doing. So just hold off on that just a little bit as I did right there so your abominations at least can purify themselves and then otherwise you should be fine. Um, Azar Javid is really, really good as a protector, as you saw against Nilfgaard, because they don't really have a good option to take out the uh, small, very small scarabs. And even then, you could technically poison them uh, to buff them a little bit with uh, Gallard. But uh, yeah, let's go into another match. So next up is Monsters. That's going to be sources. Kelly, isn't it? Keltullus. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of veils, and veils are of course not good for this deck. But we have a way of purifying if we need to. That is going to be interesting. Okay, um, assault is not going to be enough anyway to kill it, anything, so like Siri or anything. So we're going to have to really bank on our abilities here. It's not worth having too much poison right now, because with the Veils of the leader ability, so Carapaz gives them Veil, they're not going to be able to get poisoned on most of their units. I'm going to get rid of the Mutated Hounds, and that's going to be it, yeah. Let's do it like that, okay. So now, we're playing against monsters, so I need to be careful to not get hit with a Predatory Dive, so we're going with the Street Urchins first, just to have something that might be taken out if we get hit with Predatory Dive. Azar Javid is definitely going to be lost. Well, kept for the final round because Kaltullus is going to be really, really annoying. Okay. 
So they won't be able to veil those. But let's get the abomination here and poison it. I'll hold off on veiling it. I don't need to do that just yet. It's still 7 points, so would be surprised that uh, our opponent would be able to take that out. And then we get Vigern. Vigern already. And that's gonna be... Hmm. I'm tempted to already use the location card for this, although I don't have I don't have another poison now. Um, all right, I do have enough to actually use the Salamandra Mage. I think it's just going to be better to veil the uh, Abomination and work from there. So let's just veil the Abomination um, and then use Gallard Blindheim because I never actually showed that off. Um, right now, Gallet is below his, uh, well, above his adrenaline threshold, so he doesn't have a cooldown. So you can actually just do this, which is a lot of fun. So <laughs> you can just keep going technically, but I don't want to make it too big. I just wanted to demonstrate that in a match, and now I'm going to get hit by something really, really tall removally, and we're, we won't have that card anymore. We get Parasite, and Parasite kills Roland, okay, uh, Gallet. I keep... I keep mixing those guys up. Um, I don't actually have good poisoners right now. Let's use the Salamandra Mage, but not actually use his tribute ability. So let's just put him over there. Because uh, that will allow us to gain two coins every time we use a tribute ability from the next card onwards. And we'll be just using the uh, location card. And then we get a pass. Okay. That is weird, so I am definitely going to... Do I push against Keltalus? I suppose I should. Yeah, I'm going to push against Keltalus. That's going to be... Well, in the assumption that this is Keltalus. And my hand is just really good right now as well. Um, I think I might be able to use poisons. Uh, so I have one here. I technically have morale here. I have uh, two ways to actually generate some smaller units. So I think this is fine. Um, I'm gonna have to start with the location card, but even that is perfectly fine. So let's just finish redrawing. And let's go first. So as I said, I'm gonna start with the location cards, use the Salamandra Abomination and just poison myself again as we do, giving us a seven point card. Even though right now, yes, we're vulnerable to predatory dive. I don't really care too much at the moment. If all else fails, I could also go for a card that gives me a lot of coins with Oneromancy. So we get Nekurat. Nekurat? So is this a vampire deck? Oh, then I'm definitely gonna push because that means that there's not gonna be one big unit on the board. Oh, that's gonna be cool. Um, I still have on Aeromancy. I still have a few good cards in my deck. There's a few very big cards over here. So I don't need to overplay. Um, but I'm gonna go full on with the poisons right now. Because I have alternative options if I don't have uh, good, well, a good play with the, with the poison abilities. I mean, I should have noticed that this was a vampire deck because of the Unseen Elder Leader skin. But even, even without that... <laughs> Doesn't really make much sense that that would be the case. Ooh, four, four, four bleeding on on um, on Roland. That's gonna be yeah. That's that's annoying. Roland. I think I'm gonna protect Roland with a double. Yeah, with a double scarab. Although I don't have any benefit for the tributes just yet. Um, Fallen Rayla is one more turn. Salamandra Mage is another turn. So I think. I'm gonna just start poisoning. So let's use Oneromancy, get Morale out, and poison the Bruxa. And then I technically could poison another one, uh, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. And now it's gonna get Purified, there we go. Bleeding and poison is gone. So we get Karantir first, but Karantir is gonna be a one power unit on the Unseen Elder, but he's gonna get boosted. Okay, I was assuming that was going to happen, but now we don't have a, a purifier. And that's one Unseen Elder. I want to bait this out a little further. So let's use the Salamandra Mage now. 
Pay the tribute and then hit the uh, center over here. So that should give us, it only gave us one coin, that's annoying. Um, and then we could technically also use Morale again. I'm not go going to. I'm going to hold off one more turn to see where this ends. So now we got the Cave Troll. The Cave Troll is also going to get protected? No. Okay, then the Cave Troll is dead. That That is absolutely fine by me. I'm going to... Hmm... Do I want to play the Salamander now? So I have... Now I'm going to do one more Fallen Rayla play. So that one also has Veil. So that protects us a little bit better. We get more coins out of that. Okay, we're fine. We have a really good setup at the moment. So I'm going to just go into the next turn. Because right now we're up top. And then we get Crimson Curse, but Crimson Curse... Might accidentally hit Veil, might accidentally hit the Abomination, that's not going to happen. But the Abomination gets hit and the poison, the bleeding is going to go every single time. Okay, so now we have one, two, three, four Salamander units on the field. And we have Salamander itself. So let's just put Salamander here, might as well get hit by some bleeding because that's not going to do anything. We have just enough coins to do this and that's going to kill that one little unit. We get Morale to actually kill the Cave Troll. And then we have the uh, Location card to actually just kill... Yeah, the uh, Karanti over here. And that also gives us more coins, but we can't spend them just yet. So uh, let's just do this. I did waste a few coins here because, of course, because of all the poisons, I'm not getting rid of the, uh, the coins as effectively. And we didn't have Jacques on the field just yet. Uh, Jacques is not going to have Veil. But it is going to be probably the best card at the moment. So there we go. Now they're going to go full out with the Unseen Elders. I don't... I still have good cards in my yeah, in my deck. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to hold back now. The There's one card that has now been veiled. That is interesting. Um, Jacques is going to go over here. He's also going to pay his tribute. Because of course Fallen Rayla is going to get boosted because of that. And then I'm going to boost... Jacques up to 9? Yeah, maybe up to 10. There we go. Don't we have 4 coins left. But the Blood Moon, as you can see, is now basically useless. Because uh, the Blood Moon is hitting the Rayla, most likely. The only problem I might have now... Is that... I think I don't have a spender. Oh, we still have Horses Freak Show, right? I could still spend my coins. I think I'm gonna bail out now. They've used all their charges, they've used the Unseen Elder. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to. Because there's a lot of bleeding on the board right now, that's gonna keep going with Oriana. Um, so let's just pass. That's one three points gone, so that's ten points. Nobody's bleeding anymore. But of course with the double Unseen Elder, they might actually risk another pass, but they're not going to, yeah. You can't risk it at that point. The NL Conqueror. So we definitely need Horson's Freak Show next. Which will allow us to kill. <laughs> that just keeps hitting the failed Rayla. So there we go. They still managed to stay on even cards. And we managed to stay on even cards. And we just drained all their good cards. Unseen Elder is gone twice. And then Oriana is gone. So the only card that they might still have left is that Love. Because um, the Blood Moon was also gone. So yeah, this should work out okay. We get Horson's Freak Show. Um, we also still have Savola. But Fistek is going to be useless. So let's, although, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of Fistek. Oof. We could double poison. And then bounty that same card and then just spend all the coins with uh, Horson's Freak Show. But it's not guaranteed, of course. Um, I'm gonna get rid of Fistack again. Okay, we got the Fistack Trafficker. So we still have <laughs> a lot of poisonous. Okay. Um, let's start off with Azar Javed. So that's gonna be three coins, and we just get those two defenders. That's gonna be the row where we need to put Horson's Freak Show on next. So we can definitely start killing stuff. And there we have that Lav. He's gonna spawn Blood Moon. And he has the order ability, but I'm going to kill him before he can actually do anything. 
because um, that's gonna start killing off our defenders here. So let's just put Horse and Freak Show down, get one extra uh, bit of coins there, and then we can just kill that love in one go, and that should be fine. I could have also put a bounty on that uh, that love over there, but we still have a few options to actually deal with that. Uh, so that purifies. Ooh. I don't want to lose our spender now. Um, I'm going to put everything on Savola. So for Savola, we need to have six coins in the back. So I can poison um, my own unit, giving us three coins. And with the leader ability, that gives us another four. So we don't need anything more. Uh, so I can actually hit the, uh, the card in the back once. And then pass. We lose our defender there. Which I think was a waste of uh, a good card there, but a good amount of bleeding. Uh, Kurt is going to be useless, but that's not too bad. Um, I could still purify if I wanted to, so I'm just going to use off the books now. And use an Aeromancy to play Savola, who gives us two coins, giving us just enough to get the Frightening out. There we go. That's 14 points ahead and we still have one card and we can use that to just get rid of some bleeding if we might get hit with some more bleeding. It might give us an extra point on Kurt. No, okay, so that's Ozreal, that's gonna be 14 points. We're gonna get hit by three with the API and Phantom. So I think we just won this. Yeah, they're gonna get one more point there, but with uh, this, just enough. Two points, two points of difference. Uh, so I think Zavola was definitely the, the right play there. We definitely poisoned enough cards in that second row round. And yeah, that was actually a pretty good showcase of the power of this deck. So there we have it, the uh, Salamandra Alliance deck. Really, really powerful alternative if you don't want to uh, play crimes in a Syndicate, but uh, just want to have a good time with a very powerful Poison and Tribute based deck, then this might just be the deck for you. You can check out the deck in its entirety on the Play Gwent website. I've put the link in the description down below, but uh, you can see all the cards here as well. One more time. So definitely try to uh, pace yourself and in that final round, your best cards are definitely Shark, Fallen Rayla, uh, and everything that has Tribute. But the Salamander combo is just so powerful if you can set up a lot of separate poison uh, abilities on the field. The only deck that definitely has an option to guard against this is Monsters, because they can start consuming those cards that get uh, poisoned to get rid of the poison. But then you just flip the order around, you play Salamander first, rather late in the round and store up on your remaining poisons. That poisons everything on the board, so your opponent will not be able to consume every single card and just you'll have at least one or two very high uh, powered units to kill with the remaining poisons in your hand. Uh, and other than that, I think I've shown you most of the combos, the tribute abilities with Salamandra Mage and then Fallen Rayla are also very good to just build points on your side. And definitely the Salamandra Abomination, if you manage to veil it and get Gallagher to just boost it continuously, that could be very good as well, provided your opponent does not have Tall Removal. But that's going to be it for today's deck guide. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, especially if you have any tips to improve upon this deck, because that's what we're here for after all, trying to help each other out. Uh, don't for forget to leave a like on this video if you've enjoyed it, and give the uh, the guide on the Plague Vent website an upvote as well, because that's going to get me a bit more um, exposure on those deck guides as well, because I really like to help each other, well, people out with the, uh, the deck ideas to give them a fresh option aside from everything that's available in the meta. Um, and there we have it. That's another deck for you to try out in the remaining, what is it, 10 days in the season we still have over the week left. Um, and yeah, enjoy the Gwent Open this weekend because it's uh, in full swing. And uh, that's it from me. Thank you guys enormously for watching. I hope to see you in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye and stay nutty.